The federal debt limit and the possibility of a government default is on the table again today as President Biden meets with top congressional leaders. The Treasury Secretary repeated yesterday that they are running out of time to make a deal. Weijia Jang is at the White House with more. Weijia, good morning. And Marie, good morning to you and good morning to everybody. We talked to a source familiar with the discussions who says that even though uh, there isn't a deal that's going to be on the table, that the meeting is probably not going to end with some kind of a big handshake or something signed, that the two sides have made progress. So this is how it works. Staff members from all of these groups have been working for days now in order to bring something to the principal leaders, that is Speaker Kevin McCarthy, as well as other congressional leaders, and of course, President Biden, ahead of their meeting today. And we know that McCarthy is demanding spending cuts be attached to any deal to raise the debt ceiling. And one area of compromise we've learned about is rescinding COVID relief funds that have been approved but not yet spent. In a letter to McCarthy yesterday, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned him that if Congress fails to raise the debt ceiling, it would cause severe hardship to American families and harm our global leadership position. Yellen's letter comes as the Office of Management and Budget, or OMB, also released a memo this morning saying that the proposed cuts by House Republicans would cut at least 30 percent of all areas outside of defense, the Veterans Affairs Department, and Homeland Security, with severe impacts on programs including cancer research, Meals on Wheels for Seniors, preschool and child care and veterans programs. Now, it is important to note that OMB is part of the executive branch and the director who issued that memo is appointed by the president. Secretary Yellen also warns that the U.S. could run out of money on June 1st or in the immediate days or weeks after that, which really means there is no time to waste here to get a deal done. Because even if you waited until May 31st, Congress still needs time to write uh, a deal and uh, put it together and to pass it. And so time is running out. We also know that President Biden is heading to Japan tomorrow morning for the G7 summit. Uh, and he has said himself that if talks were going south, if things um, weren't progressing, he would consider staying. But Emory, we should say that as of right now, the White House insists that President Biden is going on that trip. So a lot of optimism here, but we'll of course have to wait to see what they're saying after they meet face to face. Right. I mean, he seems to think that things are going well enough that he could leave the country. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, however, was stopped yesterday and asked about how negotiations were going. This is what he said. I appreciate the president finally willing to talk after 97 days, but there is no movement. And if you look at the timeline to pass something in the House and pass something in the Senate, you got to have something done by this weekend, and we are nowhere near any of that. All right, so is this an indication of just how far apart the two sides are, that they don't even see things the same? Or is this an indication that politically it's better messaging for Kevin McCarthy to appear as if he's digging in his heels and not negotiating, but it's sort of the flip side for the president that it's better for him to appear as if he's a master negotiator? I think you just nailed it, Anne-Marie, because um, publicly these two cannot even agree on a timeline. The president is leaving the country, as we talked about. Um, he's saying that, you know, there is progress being made. The White House was actually uh, called it a positive development that the meeting happening today was supposed to happen last week, but it got delayed. They said that's a sign of progress. We just heard Speaker McCarthy saying that a deal has to be reached by this weekend in order for it to be passed and to go through to actually prevent uh, that default happening on June 1. So to answer your question, Emory, there is a lot of posturing here. There is still a lot of fighting in public here. Of course, we don't know what happens behind closed doors. In fact, uh, the last time I had a chance to ask President Biden about this last week, I asked him, you know, in public, McCarthy insists that he refuses to decouple raising the debt ceiling with these spending cuts that he is pushing for. Is that the same message that he's sending to you behind closed doors? And essentially, the president said, you know, he took a long pause and he said, you know, he's going to honor gentlemen's agreement and not talk about what they talk about behind closed <laughs> doors. But reading between the lines, I mean, clearly both sides have to give a little bit here. And I think talking about semantics, whether this is a negotiation or not, the fact is 
they are hashing out some kind of a deal, right? So um, it is up to us to just wait to see how the things go. But I will say that the general sentiment around here is that there's not a real concern. There's not a real threat mm. that they're not going to do it in time. But that could just be uh, optimism again. All right. In the meantime, we watch this drama unfold again. Uh, Ouija, thank you very much. You're welcome.